Hi there, Robin here, and today we're going to clean out the actual TFAL deep fryer. This is with the actual built-in filter and storage container at the bottom. Real important because a lot of people talk about, oh, what goes on here, which is great. But what makes this deep fryer special is how well the actual filter and built-in storage container. Now, make sure not to overload this with grease. This way you end up overloading your actual catch basin. But at the same time, the filter that's going to do the job, it's going to do a really good job, and it makes everything else easy to clean up. So what we're going to do in this video is, well, clean it up and talk a bit about what I like and dislike about the machine. Not a lot of dislike, but there are some quirks in it that I do think we need to talk about. So right now we are going to drain the unit out. It is in the fry position, which is straight up, but I'm going to show you what the actual bucket looks like. We're going to slide this out. That's what the actual catch looks like. It comes right out, of course, because from here we're going to be able to bring it back on top and drain it back in if we need to put that in right away. And it's very easy to wash out and it's very easy to maintain. It seals really well. I've used this already. This isn't my first time. So the unit has been actually filtered in already and I've drained it out and I've used it again. Now, the big thing is when I was draining it back in here, I was tilting this to drain the oil. And I'm going to show you how that there was oil aligning all the way around. None of it leaked out. It stayed solid and sealed. I was very surprised. I thought, oh, for sure, some of it's going to leak out. Nope, not a drop. Really worked out well. Make sure the lid's on, of course, tight for that. Can fry without this in here, but you absolutely cannot drain without this in here. The lever just won't go. So in this case, I'm all set, ready to go. I'm going to put that in the down position, which is now in the draining position. It's going to take a while. This is like a five minutes, so we'll come back when it's all done. So while the actual unit continues to drain, let's talk a bit about what's going on here and some of my things I like in this. I like the size of the basket. I like the fact the basket's nice and square. I like how well it sits in the unit. Now the catch here, I wish it was a little bit taller because right now if I push forward, it will just you know fall down. So I wish it was just a little bit higher and I'm talking about the catch on the inside. But outside of that, it does what it's supposed to do. It does keep the actual basket up. The power cord is absolutely phenomenal. The power cord is magnetic. So they tell you, you know, to be careful not to use it outdoors, that sort of thing. Now, I, you know, full disclosure, I use mine outdoors. Uh, I have a table that's up against the house where I like to actually do this. Uh, and I do have to use it on a uh, three foot extension cord because this cord is very short. But the important thing is for safety purposes, this just pops off. The cord faces upward, only works on one direction. Any subtle touch, the power cord comes right off. That's how easy it is. I mean, it goes on really well. It stays on, but if anything knocks it out of place, it comes off. Doesn't move the actual fryer, nothing moves, just the power cord comes off. That is phenomenal. I absolutely love that safety feature there. For the actual heating element itself, it works as advertised. That's the important part. There's an on-off switch off to the side, which you don't see a lot of people turn on and off, but there is an on-off switch, and that's how you get this unit on. Uh, after that, you just set the temperature. There's only one light on it. There's no green light, red light system going on here. So when it does reach temperature, the red light goes off, but there's no green light to tell you that it's actually on. Uh, so again, it works really well. I, it's too bad it didn't have that extra green light. So do pay attention to that. The important part is it doesn't stay on constantly. It gets the temperature and then it turns itself off. The other important thing to note is that there are two thermometers, two temperature sensors here to control the unit. Now that's really good, except they're really close to the burners. So once it gets the temperature, I'd probably let it sit for another five to 10 minutes to make sure that the heat is actually even throughout the entire deep fryer. Uh, if not, it will be very hot down here right next to those sensors, but we're still waiting for the rest of the oil to get to that temperature. I use a thermometer so I can actually see what's going on. And then once it gets temperature, it does hold temperature really well. Now this is all gonna wash off really nice. I'm gonna be very cautious not to get water, of course, up here. I am gonna wash all this down and get all the grease that has, you know, splashed up and gotten on everything else and clean that off really nice. So this is the actual container that's gotten all the storage. We're still in the auto you know, filter setting and we're going to be turning that off soon because we are going to be getting rid of what's left. So we do have a wee bit left over down at the bottom, but we're just going to get rid of all of that. Now, the last stuff I've made was a lot of batter deep fried chicken. Uh, I did chicken strips and I did chicken breasts. So I've got all that left at the bottom. Uh, it was great. It was an awesome supper. I'm on a hobby kick right now to try and get as close to a Popeye's type chicken. So, you know, that's what I've been doing in here. 
Outside of that, I'm gonna be able to clean this out. It's been very easy to clean out to this point. Everything's gonna come out of here. This is all that we're gonna have left is a metal basket to clean up. So now to actually release the grease box, we're just gonna slide this lever all the way to the end, just like that. And now we'll be able to slide the grease box out. Now, this is all that's left. Everything else is out of here now. This is just an actual steel box, just ready to go, nothing more than that. Uh, so again, I'm going to be able to wipe this down, clean this up, no problem here. Uh, it's going to be very, very easy to follow through with. All the oil is now inside this container right here. So here we go. We've got all the parts all washed and clean. Of course, this is our grease. This is the grease that I have for chicken, and it's going to stay in here because I'm probably going to be using it one more time. After that, I will be washing up because this whole thing will be going on a bit of a road trip with me because I'm going to be making some chicken in somebody else's house. So for now, we're going to put this all back together. And how do we do that? Well, we simply are going to take this guy first. And notice how when I tilt it, the grease hits the top, but it's not coming out anywhere. It's not leaking. That's very, very important. Very, very safe. Now, I won't travel with it like that. I'll put it back in its storage containers so I can travel with it. But for now, it's going to go right back there. I'll turn this around so you can see what happened. So, of course, it's in here now. And now we're going to put this right back in the middle. That means this guy won't come out anymore. It's stuck in there. That's important. Now we can put the actual basin back in, which is this right here. And again, wash is very easy because when you take it apart, everything's gone. Notice even the electronics aren't in here. I was able to wash that separate. So here is the actual unit. Now, if you have a double sink like I have, you can actually sit this on the two sides so you can wash this side out, no problem. And this stays on the other sink. And then I basically take my rag, rinse it out of most of the water, just have a little bit of soap, give this all a good wipe down. So this way, not too much water, just wiping off the grease, dry it off right away. It's ready to go for next time. So now we can put the basket in it. Basket's gonna go right in, no problem. Again, washes out really easy. That's important. And now we've got the lid. The only thing I haven't put in there was the power cord. So now we've got all that on top. We're right back to a clean wash product. Always clean it up when you're done with it. It's so simple, so easy. That's the important part. And that's why you got it. So I hope this video helped you out today a bit in your buying decision. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Like I say, thanks for watching. Bye for now.